Hello, welcome to physics lesson 6.07 centripetal force part two um, problems. So we are going to look at a car uh, which is on a banked curve. Uh, it has a radius of 122 meters and an angle of 28 degrees. Um, <clears throat> we're going to answer a couple questions. Um, so the question says, what is the maximum velocity that the car can travel? And we're going to set uh, acceleration due to gravity at 10 meters per second to make this a little bit easier. <clears throat> but the other thing is, uh, we don't have friction here. It's, it's iced over. So what's providing the centripetal force? We talked about in the past videos, it could be tension. It could be gravity. It could be normal force. We know it's not friction. So what is it? Well, you always want to start these problems off with a free body diagram. And um, I'm going to actually start this in black. So let's go with a nice big free body diagram, maybe. 28 degrees. Let's put our car, which is always a box, on the curve. And I usually start with the weight vector, but this time I'm not going to do that. Um, and before I put any vectors on, let's talk about uh, something. So you know that when we worked force problems before, when we put things on inclines, it can make things a little more complicated. And in the past, what we did was we tilted our coordinate system. For reasons which I'm going to explain in a bit, we don't want to do that. And we're going to go with this coordinate system. This time, the first vector that I want to draw, starting at the center of mass, is my normal force. My normal force. Now, the reason I drew this first, notice what I have going on. So if I could take a pencil and very lightly sketch in my axes. I'm not resolving my weight vector, I'm resolving this. So this vector is going to have to be resolved. The reason I'm doing this is, and I'm going to kind of in darker pencil sketch out, my centripetal force are any forces that are pointing to the center of the curve. So this, this acts as my center and I have 122 meters between here and here. And I have to analyze for the forces that are on this line. And so if I tilt my coordinate system, it kind of screws everything up because it's centripetal force that's pulling it in. Now I don't add another vector and I'm going to erase this because I don't want you to think we add a centripetal force vector. The centripetal force is the presence of whatever forces I have that are operating in that direction. And I need a better eraser. Where did I put my good eraser? So let's just get that back out of there before it confuses y'all. Um, so the reason I drew my normal force vector first, and I'm going to split out, I have red vectors, so I'm going to do pink to resolve. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to bring this over. So now I have my vertical component and my horizontal component. <clears throat> um, the the car let's do our motion analysis before we go any further now i'm looking at a side view if i was looking at a top down view so if i had a bird's eye view and i was looking at my my car going around my bank if the car flies off the car is going to fly off like this whoops mistake tangential to the curve Or that's where its velocity is going to be. Its displacement is it's going to it's going to fly off this way too. On this diagram, the way that I would want to represent my motion is this way. So my motion is going to be this way. And again, that's the drawbacks of trying to do a bird's eye versus a side view. Um, now I'm not moving this direction, so my weight vector has to be equal and opposite. To my vertical component. So let me let me pause and let's go back over what we've done so far. The coordinate system can't tilt because I need to look for the forces that are going to act towards the center of the circle, which is here. So I'm going to end up resolving this normal force. Um, 
I'm not moving this way. I don't have any motion. So my weight vector has to be equal and opposite to FNY. So this is FW. So if this is the, the direction of my um, uh, centripetal force, it probably would have been better if I had resolved this vector this way and this way, which I could have done. It's just habit that I did it this way. But see, now we can see that this is my centripetal force. This vector here is what keeps my car in the curb. So what's providing my centripetal force? It's, uh, it should be an X. It's the horizontal portion of my normal force. Not the whole normal force, only this horizontal portion. All right, let's, get, let's do some trig. So if I have an angle of 28 here, uh, without going through the geometry of it, this angle is gonna be 28. Uh, we rounded uh, acceleration due to gravity up to 10. So my weight vector is gonna be mass times gravity. My mass is eight, 1,850, so I'm gonna have 1,850. My black pen's about had it, times 10. So this is going to be 18,500. Newtons. It's going to be negative. So this is going to have to be positive 18,500 Newtons. I have an angle here of 28. Uh, I could use tangent function here. So I could say that tangent of 28. Is going to be the opposite, which is FNX over 18,500 over adjacent. And that gives me an FNX value of 9,836. What I have is that the force that's providing my centripetal um, force is 9,836 Newtons. And I know that my centripetal force is equal to mass tangential velocity squared over radius. My mass is 1,850. I'm solving for VT squared and my radius is 122. So when I break this down, I end up with 1,850 VT squared over 122 is equal to 9,836. And I get a velocity of 25.4 meters per second. Well, there's quite a few changes here, but what has stayed the same, uh, what our takeaways are, I'll tell you what, before we do takeaways, um, I wanna solve for, in the next problem, we're gonna need this. So let's just solve for my normal force now, because what we're gonna do in the next problem is we're gonna add friction. So let's just throw this calculation in. If I have a right triangle and one leg is 1,000, 18,500 and the other leg is 9836. I do square root 9836 squared plus 18500 squared. That's going to give me a normal force of, where did I write it down? 3,952. So that's done for the next problem. So here are our takeaways. When we're working with a car that's going on a banked turn, when I don't have any friction, I'm gonna have two vectors. I'm gonna have the normal force and that's still perpendicular to my surface. I'm gonna have the weight vector, which is straight down. But this time I'm not going to tilt my coordinate system. I'm going to leave it on the horizontals and the verticals because my centripetal force operates towards the center of the circle. So I have to find those vectors that are going to point in this direction. Those are what provide the centripetal force. In this case, the horizontal portion of the normal force. Using our angle and trig and knowing what the weight vector is, we can bust this out and we can solve for this, which I can then set equal to my formula for centripetal force. And when I solve, I find that if I want to stay on this curve on when it's perfectly icy. If I can keep my velocity at 25.4 meters per second, 
I won't slide up or down if I can keep that constant velocity. Now that's tough to do. And luckily we don't have to do that except for on very rare occasions. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to move on to uh, uh, 6.08 and we're gonna do this uh, same problem, but we're going to add a friction vector to it. So let's break the video here and uh, that's all for now.